Here we're going to look at a nice problem from the Nepal Math Olympiad. So this is from the year 2018 and it's question 2a. And our goal is to find the value of 2014 times x plus y minus xy minus 100 times a plus b given that x, y, a, and b satisfy the following system of nonlinear equations. So we've got ax plus by is 7, ax squared plus by squared is 49, ax cubed plus by cubed is 133, and ax to the fourth plus by to the fourth is 406. And what I think is curious about this problem is that we use the year 2014 here, although it's from the year 2018 exam. But this is how I found this problem written, so I'm actually surprised this is not a 2018. Okay, so let's maybe look at some hints. So my first hint is to write the given equations in terms of each other. And that is maybe we could take this third equation and write it in terms of the second or maybe this fourth in terms of the third, or so on and so forth. So I think that'll give you a good start. And then my second hint is to solve for x plus y, xy, and a plus b as they're grouped together, not the individual variables x, y, a, and b. And you'll see that this works really well with, with our first hint and with our goal expression. Okay, so maybe give this a problem, we'll go with these hints, and then we'll come back with the solution. Okay, hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to jump into a solution. And we're gonna start with our first hint, which was to write these given equations in terms of each other. And I wanna notice that the left-hand side of this second equation can be almost built from the left-hand side of this right-hand equation if we multiply by x plus y. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So the first thing that we want to notice is if we take ax squared plus by squared, that's equal to ax plus by times x plus y but we've picked up some extra terms there. So notice if we were to multiply this out, we would get a couple of extra terms. And what do those extra terms look like? Well, they're like the cross terms. So we have ax times y, so ax times y, and we have by times x. So I'll write that as bxy. But luckily there's like a greatest common factor there of x plus or x times y. So we can get rid of this extra bit just by subtracting x times y and then a plus b. And now looking at this, we see that we can't quite write this second equation in terms of the first equation and some other stuff that's on the board, but we can write the second equation in terms of the first equation and our goal terms, which are x times y and a plus b. So let's just keep that in mind for now. But using this as inspiration, let's move on to writing the third equation in terms of the second and the first equation. So we can do that pretty easily. We've got ax cubed plus by cubed equals ax squared plus by squared times x plus y minus x times y and then ax plus by, like that. So again, that's taking inspiration from this thing up here. And I want to notice multiplying these out, we get some extra terms. And what extra is canceled by this thing right here? So let's notice that the extra is ax squared times y. So we'll write that as ax squared y plus bxy squared. So again, that's canceled out by the stuff that we subtract. And by extra, I mean that's what is in this product, but not on the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, good. Now let's make a version of this equation involving the fourth, third, and second equation and see what that can do for us. So we've got ax to the fourth plus by to the fourth equals ax cubed plus by cubed times x plus y minus xy and then ax squared plus by squared. 
Again, using the same strategy that we used before. But now what I want to do is write the terms from each of these equations using our givens. So we know some of these things like ax cubed plus by cubed is 133, ax to the fourth plus by to the fourth is 406, and so on and so forth. So this purple equation I'll write here, and then this green equation I'll write right below it like that. Okay, so we've got ax cubed by cubed here, so that's gonna be 133 equals, so ax squared by squared, so that's 49 times x plus y, and then we have minus ax plus by times seven, so that's gonna be seven times xy, like that. And what's nice about this is this is a linear equation, not in xy, because this is a nonlinear term in x times y, but this is a linear equation in the variables x plus y and x times y. So that's good news because those were the variables that we, we were interested in solving for. Okay, now let's look at this green equation. So we've got 406 for the left-hand side. So that's gonna be equal to 133 x plus y, and then it'll be minus 49 times xy. Again, from this given stuff over here. Okay, nice. So next what we can do is, well, use several different methods to solve this system of equations. I maybe want to notice that seven is a divisor of 49, or in other words, 49 is a multiple of seven. So perhaps the easiest thing to do would be to take this purple equation, multiply by negative seven, and then add these two equations. So let's see maybe what that gives us. So again, what I'm doing is multiplying this equation by negative seven and adding these two equations. <clears throat> so what you get, you'll have 406 minus seven times 133. So I'll let you guys check, but that's gonna be equal to minus 525. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the right-hand side of the equation. And then next, we've got negative 49xy plus 49xy, so that cancels. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. So I'll go ahead and just cross those out. And then we've got 133 minus seven times 49. That's my coefficient of x plus y. So that's gonna give me minus 210 x plus y. Okay, nice. But we can just divide by 210 and we'll see that x plus y equals five halves. So that's good news. We've got our value of five halves. Okay, next, we can plug this value of five halves sort of anywhere we want at this point. We could plug it into this equation or this equation for x plus y, and that'll give us x times y. So let's maybe go ahead and plug it into this equation. And that gives us a new equation that looks like this, 406 equals 133 times 5 halves minus 49 times xy. Okay. So I'll let you guys maybe solve that. That's obviously kind of elementary algebra. But what you end up with here is x times y equals minus 3 halves. So we finally have our value for x times y. Okay, good. Now next what we need is our value for A plus B. So remember we wanted to solve for our three alternative variables, X plus Y, X times Y, and then A plus B. And we can get that by taking these two values right here. So X times Y is minus three halves, X plus Y is five halves, and plugging it into this first equation that didn't seem like it was of much use at the moment. So let's see what we get for that. So we'll get ax squared plus by squared. So by our given, that's 49 equals, and then we'll have ax times by. So by our given, that's seven times x plus y. Well, that's five halves and then minus x times y. Well, so that's gonna be minus a negative three halves, so that's gonna be plus 
3 halves times A plus B. So that gives us a nice, simple algebraic equation that we can use to solve for A plus B. And if we do that, we'll get A plus B equals 21. So I'll let you guys check all of the details of that, but that's what you end up with. Okay, good. So we've got our values of X plus Y, X times Y, and A plus B. Now we're ready to plug those into our goal expression. So on the last board, we used our given equations to solve for these alternative variables, x plus y, x times y, and a plus b. Now we're ready to plug those into our goal expression and see what we get. So let's see, we have 2014 times x plus y minus xy. So that's gonna be five halves minus a negative three halves, so that's plus three halves minus 100 times a plus b, so that's easily just seen to be 2100. Another thing we can notice is this is eight over two, so this number right here is just four. Now this boils down to a fairly simple arithmetic problem, so I won't do the details, but I will tell you that the answer in the end is 5,956, and that's a good place to stop.